Good morning, UCY.TV radio listeners. This is Lonnie Clark. Today is November 24th, 2016. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. Today is Thanksgiving. It's a national holiday in the United States. And I thought I would actually uh, take this really seriously, invite on a person who is of Native American First Nations history and has been seriously violated. Thank God she's still alive. Uh We've had her on before. Hope is on with us, and I'm just going to introduce you as Hope because you have a big, long name in back of you, Hope, and I don't know how you like to be right. introduced. <laughs> Bobby That's Galileo. just fine, Lonnie. People can know you as Bobby Galileo. How about that? Right. That works, too. Uh, Robbie Castor works. You know, um, uh, yeah, I do. I do. Roberta May Hope Castor is my full name, but I go by Robbie, Bobby, and, of course, Hope, and, of course, Bob Galileo, which is my juggling name. So I do. And Lonnie, I just want to thank you so much. I think it is so great what you were doing. And uh, I know that it, it sometimes it gets really frustrating uh, to, to be up against so many people that are negating the radiation and the seriousness we're facing. Look, we have two and sets one, of people, the people who are doing it and people like the NDRC who's helping to keep the so-called environmentalists who work with the legislator to keep crippled nuclear power plants open so they can fit their own agenda. And they take millions of dollars and, from the nuclear industry. And I'll tell you something, that industry right now is killing our country, it's killing the ocean, planet. and it's killing the world. It's killing the planet. And we have options and we don't need to do them. And thank you so much for bringing up the fact that I'm First Nation. And uh, My grandmother, like a lot of assimilated Indians, she tried. She was a half-breed. She was a Stony Indian. Her name, her uh, maiden name was uh, May we, Stony. Can we, like, take our language back? She's not a half-breed. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah. <laughs> right. <Hello? laughs> She's she she wasn't blood. half animal. <laughs> yeah. Blood, uh, and I... And but actually, she she go ahead. she hid that she was afraid of it. Oh. People were so prejudiced where her and my grandfather, who was an Indian rights active activist, uh, had a homestead in Northern California. You asked me uh, last week when did they really start targeting me? I might have been targeted before birth. Uh, the Zane Gray stories. Uh, my grandfather, they're about him. Uh, he had a huge, uh, uh, he is Nevada Smith, the character. Would you explain what that means to people who have not read Zane Gray? Would you tell us what that is? Zane Gray wrote a lot of books about Nevada Smith. Nevada Smith was modeled after my grandfather. Okay. And he was, and my grandfather had a huge, massive horse uh, ranch in Northern California by Mount Shasta. Wow. And, um Yeah. So, I mean, this well, tell us the it goes way dad back. Did. Many people haven't read Zane Gray. Tell us what that means. He was modeled after, you said this after Nevada Smith. But... Right. Nevada Smith was a character he wrote about, and he wrote about Indians, but he wrote basically about Westerns. And Nevada Smith was a, um, a half Indian person who lived there and, and wrangled horses and built a great horse ranch. Oh. And that was my grandfather. Oh, okay. And my grandfather was shot in his back for his ranch. Wow, really? If people think that Native Americans can simply go out and assimilate, it wasn't that easy. It was never easy. Um, a lot of us died. And if we stayed on the res, yes, we kept our, our social conscience, but even though we were trying desperately to keep our heritage alive, uh, we were attacked not only with disease, but with alcohol, which is a white man's poison. Right. It is poison water, is what I call it. Well, you know, it's, there it's, is a biological reason. People that have brown skin and very light blue eyes do not have the hormones inside their intestines to digest alcohol. That's why it's... Fire. I believe that. It Absolutely. literally is fire yeah. water. I mean, there's certain types of people that can handle the alcohol because they have an enzyme in their stomach that grows that helps them deal with it. So let's move right. on. So I believe you. Uh, Native Americans, I don't ha think have it a, a lot of the time. And I think it's because we didn't have fermented alcohol back in the day. We never fermented, especially Northern, America, uh, Northern Native Americans. 
So uh, grandmother used to sit on at, I, at the I, Thanksgiving. Again, do you mind if I correct you? Because I, I am really picky about pay, taking back our language. I think we should call Okay, go for it. I think we, instead of using Native Americans, how about First Nations? Let's remind Absolutely, people Absolutely, that that's what I used, yes. were ripe, wiped off the map. And the, I mean, they're, uh, to be honest, my blood is French and guttural English, right? Like, it's really just a little mm-hmm. bit of everything. And my, I think my great grandfather scamped a, a, a Mexican woman, and that's our Latin heritage. <laughs> a stolen woman. Cool. You know what I mean? So, but the point uh-huh. is this is I did not know anything. And I, this is why I wanted to talk to you on Thanksgiving. I have this venue, and I want to be like, uh, we need to start talking about reality with the culture that we've been brainwashed into. And this is why like, right. I'm the perfect person. Like, is I bought the farm on everything. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I honestly I hear you. no idea. I knew that people on the reservations uh, had a meager lifestyle because they had casinos and chose not to go with big industry. That was the theory that we were told. The, mm-hmm. the desperation... The neglect, the, just everything that goes on. The utilities, because they don't want to participate with the utility companies, just completely uh, shaft Native Ameri- the whole First Nations communities. Absolutely. In fact, there are many people at Standing Rock who are protesting that pipeline that do not have enough money come February for a little container of kerosene, they will freeze to death this winter. That's the truth. And the same people at Standing Rock fighting right now to stop that pipeline are the same people, the Lakota Dakota tribe, who died at Wounded Knee. And uh, for First Nations peoples everywhere, we think about that today and every day. And I'm very, very proud of those people. And let me tell you something. This is not a fossil fuel nuclear paradigm. The First Nations people are not, are not pro-nuclear. We are anti-fossil fuels, but we are also anti-nuclear. This is not an either or, a right or a left. All of that is fake. All of it. We are pro-Mother Earth. We are uh, pro-life on planet. Gaia. I mean, this is what we can do this. We don't need to live in their template anymore. I agree. And I I have renewable energy. I think that is partly why I am being so harassed so viciously. I mean, I almost died last Saturday. I mean, I thought I can't stand the gaslighting anymore. Let me explain real, real quickly. My privacy is violated. They stole intellectual property from me. That intellectual property went on to make billions and billions of dollars. What year um, was this? I lost my home. Um, I know, I knew for sure that my intellectual property was being stolen by 1997. But the work that they had stole was from the late 80s. So my privacy has been violated for a long, long time. Do we have the technology for that? Yes. I was blown up in my car, as I mentioned last interview. I was locked up for two and a half years. I never saw one time in that entire time my criminal lawyer. Now, that was the first offense. I'd never done anything wrong before then. Imagine that. Imagine that. This is the United States of America. I was never diagnosed with a mental illness. I was put to death three times behind bars. On medicine, they knew I was allergic to. And let me tell you something. On the smallest dose of that medicine, I am lucid. I'm talking to you. I know my name. I know what day it is. I'm fine. On the smallest dose of that medicine, I am absolutely, you wouldn't know me. I wouldn't know me. I mean, that medicine How did you How did you get through all of these things? I think the spirituality, I think the spiritual path. My grandmother used to sit on the head of our our Thanksgiving dinner table. And um, she was a a great old lady. She was a great Dane is what she was. She was a real lady. And she would sit there and she'd give me a twinkle in her eye. And I'd know something was coming and everybody would be quiet because she had the twinkle on. You know what I mean? That twinkle certain people get. And she'd go, if we give them back the beads, will they all go home? <laughs> and she meant if, if, you know, because we were supposed to have sold our land for white man's beads, would all uh, the white people leave? 
And uh-huh. she'd say it to me, who was kind of a little redheaded girl, because I was the one that looked white in the whole family. And she'd say it to me, and it would be some a blessing on me. And I'd look at her and I'd go, I don't think so, Grandma, but it's a good thought. <laughs> and we would really believe that. My mother was the most beautiful, sparkling. Her garden was beautiful outside. She was an organic gardener. Her house was beautiful. Every Thanksgiving, our china shone, our glassware shone. She'd have the turkey just right. She'd be working for days to make the perfect little dinner for us all. This woman was so funny, and That's she was so, so sweet knowledgeable. That you have that memory. That's really beautiful. She was so beautiful inside our house and out with the beautiful little farm and the, the loving care that we took to our animals that we butchered for food, but they had good and lovely lives. And, and we lived a life that was good in itself. We had problems like any other family. Uh, uh, there were so many problems, but there was such a beauty about her. She was murdered for my work, Lonnie. I will never forget that. I will never forget that. She was murdered. So they could exploit for me intellectual property. And I know I was targeted from a child because of certain things that happened to me. And I think that what they're trying to do, what they were trying to do with me was social engineer all the arts and all the medias in a way that puts mind manacles on anybody that participates in it. Lonnie, uh, I want to give a warning here to families that might be listening. If they're small children, I prefer them not to listen to this whole conversation because I'm going to mention some of the things they did to children, some of the things they did to me, and I don't want them to hear this. I, I, I want mothers and fathers out there to be aware that this is going to kind of be really Trigger. down a, deep and real. People real. People that have been abused, too, because there, I know there's people that have been abused in our audience. And you know what? Right. And, that's just also that that my my daughter reminds me of that that sometimes I say things that triggers uh, abused people so it's a good right. idea if you're going to talk about it just to you know remind them but I think it's a perfect venue because really you have had a horrific story that let me ask you this I have do I you have. think it's in part because your father is of the First Nations or because he's an anti nuke activist or the combination of the both. I think everything I did pissed them off. One of the things I did, and and this gets into the adult thing, when I started college, I was approached by the leading girly magazine in America to pose naked. I was a real good-looking kid. And uh, uh, they approached me, and I said, whoa, no way. And I was enraged because it was on my college campus. And I went to the dean, and I had him kicked off campus. And the dean said, don't you need $20,000? This is money for you. This could pay for your education. I looked at him and I said, I'm going to have $20 million before I'm 30 years old. Do you think I'm a going dean to make would it have said that to a white woman? Yes, I, yes, because I look white. Would... Oh, really? So Absolutely. He he just Women just are should... second-class citizens, Lonnie. Women are second-class <laughs> citizens. <laughs> right. <laughs> I said that we to a client are. and he's like, well, I don't know what you mean by white male privilege. I'm like, you know what? It's everything about your life. There is right. White that's male. exactly there, right. And I right. said, you know what I told my said, and on top of that, you're tall, so you have the extra plus. <laughs> I have a friend, and I think tall. white women have it worse than any women because white women, black women, have had to have be strong. They knew who they were, and blessings on all those beautiful sisters of ours out there that fought so hard for their rights. And Native American women and Chicano women, they know that they've been treated like dirt. But so have white women in ways far worse because of hypocrisy. Because you know what a man said to me one day is he said, well, no woman has ever wanted to be president before. And I looked at him like he was insane. Hello. I went out. I should clean the toilet because I do such a good job of it. That should be my job permanently. (laughs) Oh, my God. <laughs> exactly. So exactly. Like, no. I mean, what we're fighting yeah. is serious, hardcore misogyny. This is where, you know, like, this is the whole thing about being family members and loving each other and helping each other grow. We don't have to be mad at each other because these are processes that we can, as humans, we have a big spirit. That's why you're able to survive the attacks of these people that are uh, really not attempting to kill our planet. If we don't stop them, they are going to, like, 
the plant Gaia will be fine, but the rest of us, not so much. <laughs> you know what I well, mean? You know, I have a theory on this, and it comes from being a Native American. But let me, let me explain something to you. Um, uh, I said no to this big magazine. I thought it was all over. That was fine, right? I was raped terrifically twice right after that. Horribly raped, Lonnie. But do you think? I mean, we're talking. People, people watched me being raped. Okay. Was it on school? And was it part of the? School? Uh, this was at Oregon College of Education, where, no, no, by no, the no, way, I, mean, I had honors and won awards. Excuse me, but the perpetrators were they from the school? Some were, some weren't. So some and, were from um, the school. Wow. Right, and some were not. One of them was a professor at the school. What? So, yes, And what yes. happened to them? Did you report them? Nothing, nothing. My charges were never listened to. I was minimalized. I was put down. Um, uh, okay, do you know, Marilyn Monroe is a national American icon. She was an abused child. Yeah. She took off her clothes for Playboy. Later, she became a feminist, and she said, this is wrong. This is wrong to treat women as sex objects. She was a very serious actress. She was a very great actress, Lonnie. She wasn't just a beautiful woman, okay? This woman was a really good, talented lady. Okay, what they did to Marilyn Monroe is they gaslighted her. They drove her crazy. They isolated the woman. And um, after she died, Playboy put out uh, pictures of Marilyn Monroe. You can still buy that issue, by the way. And I believe that she didn't pose for those pictures. I believe that they were taken illegally through illegal surveillance of her home. She was never paid for those pictures. She was dead. They only published them after she was dead. Now, I want you to consider that, Lonnie. Marilyn Monroe was the most famous woman in our country at the time. I believe she was murdered. Because she said no. Right now, every actress that you see, every model you see, almost all of them um, have, have, have posed for a girly magazine. And it is how they are being groomed. You can flip the station, the radio station, song after song, high whining little girl voices coming at you. The average age of a prostitute in the town I live in is 13 years old. Now, imagine the ramifications of that. Yes. These girls are hurt for life. I have had children thrown under my car. I have had children raped in front of me. Oh. I was made homeless with death threats to my child. Well, I, I said so no. Proud of you, Hope. Honestly, I'm I really said no to the whole thing. I'm proud. Thank of you. you because, because really we are not to be need. used as sex objects. We are not that. We well, are human beings. And you know why what? they came after me, Lonnie, was because my work. I proved in 1974 that the world was heating up. Now, fossil fuels are huge, huge contributors to this. But the reason the world, the climate is changing so rapidly is because of nuclear energy. And it has to do with thermal dynamics and the ultimate heat sink. And one of the things I want to apologize on our first interview, I misspoke. It wasn't 5,000, uh, 500,000 tons. It was 500,000 pounds of radioactive waste was at Teladon Wachang. And there's a big difference. You know, a pound is a pound and a ton yeah. is 2,000 point something. You yeah. know, it's a lot. Okay, but here's the reality. One half pound of plutonium evenly distributed out to everybody on Earth would kill everybody. Yeah, exactly. Thousands of towns are coming out of Fukushima. And I was listening to you and Matt yesterday, and boy, that was a good conversation, Lonnie. i got to give you a lot of credit. You two really had it getting on good. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I wanted to say was number three reactor is the deadliest reactor on the planet. That was your Moxfield reactor. I said all the way along the line, we can never use Mox fuel. Mox fuel is going to blow up. Mox fuel is so unstable. It is highly volatile. Uh, I mean, it's absolutely insane to use a Mox fuel reactor. Mox fuel was reactor number three at, at, at Fukushima. And all this talk and all this to do about reactor number four is because they didn't want us to look at number three. Number three is the deadly doo-doo. That's the one that is killing life in our ocean. 
And that's why they tried to silence me so, so much. They know I have renewable perpetual energy. They know I'm giving the world another choice. We can put it on the grid. We can build them in a year. We can have them up and running. We'll be paying one what penny for it? every dollar we spend now. Look, let me, what? let me, let, I won't, do you want to discuss it now or can we, can I call? Because look, this is something that you should talk to No Nukes Northwest. Maybe we can sponsor that and make these available. This is really serious. I cost? have to get this published. How much, uh, how, it's going how, to, how much would it cost for this process to work for the average American if you could get it funded? Like what's the cost to the consumer? It matters because we have to get it on the grid. I think that you're going to be paying probably a nickel for every every dollar you're paying now. Well, therein lies At, the problem. You can't do something that's off the grid because if you want something on the grid, <laughs> your your whole idea is going to get killed. That's already owned well, by the nuclear power industry and the coal industry. I know. I know. It's but But it's not. They're public utilities. There are wires. There are Lonnie, we own them, and we can't do it off the grid because if we start off the grid, we'll have to build a brand new grid, and that's going to cost so much money up front. But in the long run, it won't matter. In the long run, you're going to be using my energy speaking because my of energy that, is perpetual and it's renewable. Speaking of public utilities, I'm going to give out the number on Monday – uh, Nancy Newell, who's been an activist for 40 years, said that Elliot Mainzer at the Public Power, at, uh, Bonneville Power Administration that has the authority like to shut down Columbia Generating Station in an emergency, he has, and she's mm-hmm. like, yeah, if he saw it was an emergency, he could close it down. That was on Monday. That was the day that the Earth, we had this conversation in the morning, and then I heard it happened. I, I, yeah, yeah. So I, think I heard you discussing it with I'm Matt. I'm going to give the number out again, and I'm going to encourage people to call him. Uh, 800. Yes, absolutely. Let me give you the number. His name is Elliot Mainzer. You're going to be calling the Bonneville Power Administration, BPA. It's a utility. They'll say electricity or utility. They don't even say the name there. And they mm-hmm. ask them to please close down the Columbia Generating Station under an emergency, especially since Fukushima, since we are sitting on active earthquake faults. The Columbia Generating Station is sitting on active active folks earthquake faults the last geological report said a 9.0 or greater is due any day now that plant can only sustain it was built for 4.6 post fukushima they said it could sustain 6.0 so we need to call them and let me give you the number Mm -hmm. 800-282-3713 say it again 282-3713. Got it. 1-800-282-3713. And, you know, I want everybody all the way across the country to realize if Columbia Generator blows up, you are all downwinders. You are downwinders all the way from here to New York City. You are all the way downwinders. This everybody, everybody in this planet has a dog in this fight. Your children's survival depends upon this. Um, when I talk about violation of privacy, this isn't just my work that got stolen. This is your ability's children to hear good, healthy work about how they are magical beings. And I don't mean magic with ritual and dogma and superstition. I mean the magic that comes from joyous reality of participation in your life. And it is being taken from you by people who put my manacles on them every time they use me. When I say to people, and I mean this, Lonnie, you don't know how harassed I am. When I say people that are using me are killing themselves, I am not kidding. It is absolutely, um, I saw it where I lived in this town. The kids below me, one of them got killed, Mackenzie Cowan. Um, I died three times in that apartment. I was one quarter block from the police department, one quarter block from the fire department, one quarter block from the sheriff's department, and one quarter block from the FBI. I was literally surrounded. I died three times a year and a half. I lived there, dead on arrival at the hospital. I want you to consider the ramifications of that. There was surveillance in every room. The guy they locked up often threatened my life, but he didn't kill her. 
In fact, there's a video online, if you want to see it, about Mackenzie Cowens, and Wilson did not kill her. Uh, they have videos in every single apartment in that building. They have uh, video cameras in the stairwells and the elevators. He could not have transported her body. They know he didn't kill her. And you have to understand, the utility companies are playing, uh, just they're playing God. The surveillance state, we're, we're talking they the are. military and industrial complex. Point. I gave out this number. You know, you're not going to be able to talk to him, and you may not be able to talk to his secretary, but... You know, you can still leave the message. I uh, called back a couple times. Exactly. I Good point, Lonnie. I, so you, I, the we first try. couple times I wanted to talk to him and give him the message. No. After, like, the first call where I couldn't really get through, uh, I left a machine message the first time. The second time I was determined to talk to him, and that wasn't going to happen. So they actually left me on hold and left me hanging. And I couldn't even, when I finally got through, I couldn't leave a message. So I had to call back. But the point is this. You have to, this is important. The Columbia Generating Station is an urgent threat to the entire North. I mean, Fukushima is bad. We are about to get blasted. We are being blasted right now from Fukushima. But let me we do are. this. I, uh, there is a rally. Uh, my niece just came running in here, like jumping up and down like a wild animal going. At 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. in Portland, Oregon, there is going to be uh, uh, in solidarity with Standing Rock. It's going to be at 701 Southwest 6th Avenue in Portland, Oregon. So if people want to go there and show up and be peaceful protesters, uh, please do at 9 a.m. That's just a half an hour. But if anybody's in Portland and you're listening to this, you're probably up and around. So you might want to. That's kind of an interesting thing of what they're going to do there. And I hope. And I, remember, as an environmentalist, we stand against fossil fuels as well as nuclear. Nuclear is 1,000 times worse. It's right now the killer on our planet. But we do not want to lose our brothers and sisters at Standing Rock. That's the Lakota tribe, and we do not want to lose these fine people. And, and we have to get out there and stand in solidarity against them. What they have done, Lonnie, is they've said, okay, uh, nukes are bad. We'll go to fossil fuels. Then they have something happen like the Gulf. That land is destroyed for the next 100 years. The Gulf of Mexico is going to be destroyed for 100 years from that oil spill that happened. Okay, okay. then something like that happens Please. and they go, oh, okay, okay, we'll build another nuclear plant. Oh, it'll work this time. Then we'll have another Fukushima, except the next Fukushima will destroy the Earth. There, there well, this is what I think at uh, the Columbia Generating Station. The reason is because it's so close to Hanford, it would be inherently become a Fukushima because it wouldn't be the Columbia Generating Station that they might be able to contain. If they can't get in, if they have a meltdown and they need the Columbia Generating Station to cool down for two weeks, Hanford will blow up. We know that. Hanford oh, will, yeah. Oh, that yeah. It'll be worse than Fukushima. Because they It'll have be to worse than Fukushima. A day. So let me give his number out again 800 282 3713 because we did just have a gigantic earthquake in Fukushima that would cause a massive catastrophe. And look at the earthquakes that have been lining the ring of fire. The silent zone, folks, is the northwest. So when it cracks, it's going to crack. That's my yeah, point. yeah. And if we don't do and anything to stop these people and demand that they shut this down, I think it's a severe. In fact, that's what I told the woman on the phone. You know what, ma'am? I, I get it. I'm probably not going to get a call back from this guy. I told him I'm talking about this on the radio, and every show I am going to make a point of talking about it. This and Fukushima are the only two freaking things that matter on our planet right now because they are going to kill us immediately. Well. Ronnie, I have to talk about the surveillance state, too, because well, it has part killed of it. You me. Can't help it. You can't help it. Help so, the surveillance state is why we have the nuclear. Right. They go hand in hand. Yes. It's all interrelated because what we have created is we are more frightened than the, than the Germans were under Nazi Germany. Quit being afraid. Don't sit on your couch anymore. Right. I know you love your family. I know you want your turkey nice. I know. Hey, uh, on Sunday when I had dinner for uh, my nephew and his children, I didn't have any lumps in my potatoes. I was so proud of myself, okay? I mean, that's a big accomplishment for me. Okay, listen to me. The most important thing when you wake up every morning is say, what am I going to do to stop Fukushima? 
what am I going to do to stop nuclear? What am I going to do to stop the surveillance state? And you ask yourself that, you know, why am I alive? How can I survive the bullying, the harassment, the terrorism, the rape, the cruelty, the injustice? I lost my home. I worked 25 years for that house. My car was blown up. I was the one locked up. Okay, ask yourself, how can she live? Every day, my home is violated. I have to hear, thank you, sorry, die poor, and these ugly, whining little girl and boy voices by people that get there because they say it's okay to rape their children, to, to violate their lives. This is sick stuff, Lonnie. And let me tell you something. There is no referee in this game. Uh, my car spun out of control. Uh, when I lived, um, I moved out of the Burke Hill. I went back by there. I was going down the street. And in my little town, all these government buildings are clustered right there in a group. And a car moved in front of me in the lane, and I stepped on the gas. There was no gas. There was no brake. No brake at all. I spun like a top that on the sidewalk. Patty Amino. Patty Amino's car breaks. For some reason, she was going home, and all. If she said if she did not know how to drive, and she happened to be going up a hill, she was able to move her car into somebody's thing. And the mechanic came and looked at it and said, "This is odd. The, the line is a clear cut. It's clean, cleanly cut." Right. 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 Huh. It, my my brakes were totally gone. Um, and I think there was a chip in my car. And um, thank God no one was on the sidewalk in front of the firehouse on the main drag in Wenatchee. So nobody was hit. Nobody was killed. I am not um, uh, a race car driver. How did I survive that? Because it's Dharma. You do right action. And what I want to say right now to that's everybody right. listening. That's right. Repeat that. Would you explain? I know what Dharma is. And in fact, that's actually a, a, a magnificent concept. So why don't you explain that we to do some people who don't understand Righteous that. action. And, you know, India and Indian are very, very, very affiliated. It wasn't just a misspeak by Christopher Columbus. The reality is the ancestors of many North American tribes came from the Himalayas. This is absolutely true. It's been proven. They came up through Mongolian and came down into this continent. And Dharma is the concept of right action. My grandfather believed that we live and we do every action with the consciousness and the well-being of nine generations into the future. Wow. Everything we do is to protect our children. When we sun dance, that is to make a young man aware that he is a warrior protecting his tribe, that he would lay down his life for the benefit of the most disabled, the most elderly, or the newest born child of the tribe. And we are all there. Let me tell you something. We are all there. I'm Irish, too, we, and French. We are all there, folks. We all care about each other. We care about our tribe. Mm -hmm. We love each other. We are not criminals. We are not monsters. True, true. And what they're doing to me every day is monstrosity. Because what they're doing to me every day is abomination. You know what, and Hope? It's how the I live through they're it. doing it to lots of people. I mean, it's... I think now they are. Yes, now. Now it's becoming. You better believe it. And why I've lived through that is the concept of dharma, correct action. I don't want to be happy. I want to be joyous. Okay, there's a huge difference. They're trying to sell everybody fun and happy meals. Look at the German population <laughs> when Hitler took over. You know, everybody's yeah. happy, happy, happy. They're hysterically happy. Okay, what are they trying to sell you on every sitcom and every commercial? Happy, happy. No, we want joy. We want the well-being, the meaningful life. I have tried what you're doing, Lonnie, right now, up at 8 o'clock in the morning on Thanksgiving morning, talking to an, a nuclear activist. What you're doing, Lonnie, is you are doing right action. You are preparing your home, your head, your heart for joy. Joy is when we do what is plain English, the truth. Plain English, just plain stuff, folks. Let me tell you something. Let me let me get into cussing right now and why people cuss. Okay. Um, you know, everybody knows about the uh, Normans invaded England in 1066, right? Mm -hmm. That was the big Norman invasion. 
Well, to to talk to King's English, to talk the Queen's English, you could no longer use Anglo-Saxon words, which were very influenced by the South. So words like shh, and there's a T at the end, and that has to do with vowel movement. Well, to say the word, you know, to say the the bad word, the no-no word, okay, that's how the Anglo-Saxons fought against their oppressors. So they used the F word, and we all know I'm talking about sexual intercourse here. But sexual intercourse, a Norman word. You, you can... Vowel movement, Norman word. Oh. Okay? So these are the words of rebellion. They're the words of anguish. They're the words of pain. The Anglo-Saxons were displaced from everything. They lost their homes. They lost their jobs. They were hunted down. They were often tortured, beheaded. Okay? The Normans took control of everything. They were an elitist ruling class. The Normans, by the way, are from Norway, and they settled at the coast of France. That's why they're called Normans. But they also married in with selves. And so this ancient thing has come down to us, and that's why we have cuss words. When you stub your toe, you don't go, um, God bless it. You go, what? God damn it. And the reason you're using damn is you're using an Anglo-Saxon word of rebellion. Boy, this was unfair. You it was what? unjust. Do you think that there's a way that we've carried in, a, like, our DNA, that sense of anger? Because I know what, like, I'm a cusser, and I know sometimes, like, when I'm really angry, there's nothing that satisfies, like, that communication than cussing. <laughs> it, and it's a lovely outlet. It's a lovely way to vent your frustration, and there's nothing wrong with it. And when you listen to the old Anglo-Saxon words, think all of time. all the cuss words you know, and we all know a lot of them, Okay. All those words, when you say them, you're saying them with your entire mouth. You're saying them with your entire soul. They are honest words. They're good old-fashioned, normal Anglo-Saxon words. There's nothing wrong with them. Now, I try to warn you, children, don't listen to this, because we all know that we live in a very two-faced hypocrisy society. And having said that, there are places we can't use those words and be any more taken seriously or get through to a wider audience. That's true. The reason that Arnie Gunderson and Helen Caldicott and Chris Busby don't cuss on the air, I'm sure they feel like it some days. I bet they do. The reason they can't mention reactor number four, the reason they can't give their hypotheses of what might be true, and I believe Dana's right, I believe that, that that pool was gone, is because this is what I conject, this is what I think from the available evidence, but I can't prove it. So these people, to not lose their credibility, cannot do that. They can't go there. That's where we have social journalists. That's why we have Dana. That's why we have other people like him, because we realize that they can't go there. Or they would. They, I know they would. I know they're angry. Wait, wait, I know wait, they're wait, fighting wait, for life. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to contest that thought. See, okay. they, why? I think that they don't. I, I mean, I, I think that this is where Dana is actually getting me to come around on this. Like, I, they can't go there and they can't. It's all conjecture. They have gone there. Didn't they go there already? Didn't they go to Japan already? Each of them? None of them have been on site. None of them have been at Fukushima. And the reason that they won't go to Fukushima is because they know what Dana knows, what you know, what I know, and what I hope everybody in our audience, I hope this goes viral because I want everybody to know it, that Fukushima is a death zone. That the people who are going to Fukushima are, are going to die an earlier death from going there. That's right. And they weren't stupid. And they're going to get so all kinds they of really didn't go weird, there. odd diseases, and they may not present themselves for five to ten years. That's the That's reality. exactly right. You won't That's know, exactly right. You won't know in fifteen years, or when you're if you're twenty five, when you turn forty, if you get some kind of carcinoma or some lymphoma or some type of cancer, or you get an endocrine problem, or you mm-hmm. you go through, you lose all your hormones, you lose your ability to sleep, or you break out in rashes all the time. I mean, there's a litany of things that can happen and will happen, and the rashes. That's should right. Start That's exactly you right. Get cancer. And so if people go I was there, a five-time cancer survivor. I have had Graves' disease, 
terminally ill stage five and come back. I'm, I'm, I've got the highest thyroid ever removed that survived the operation. They will not to this day say that my thyroid got so destroyed from radiation from Hanford, but I got deathly ill at eight years old when I went swimming just downstream from Hanford. And uh, then it was 12 years later that I was diagnosed with Graves' disease and all these different cancers. There's an incubation for cancer that, ha- that takes a long time. I call it lag time. And there's uh, lots of other ailments. There's diabetes. There's Addison's disease. Um, there's cataracts. It goes on and on and on and on. And uh, Crohn's disease, which I have. Yeah, irritable right. bowel, which I have. Right. Uh, it, this, this stuff is horrible stuff. And um, on top of that, I've been harassed. And if you can imagine stalking a juggler, and and let me tell you a quick story. Let me tell you what real grooming is and how we are grooming children right now, what's happening in our country. Um, I'm going to tell you about the one and only time I was stoned when I was homeless. I was forced to be homeless. I'd spent already two years on probation, and they came after me, and they threatened my kid's life, and they told me how they were going to kill my kid. And I believed them. Because uh, I, I believe them by this point. My mother was dead. My sister was dead. My father-in-law was dead. My, my brother and father were both to die for this. My two best friends were dead. So I took off. I, I, they said, disappear or we're going to kill him. So I did. I slept in ditches. I had nothing. I always believed I was going to do a juggling show and come back and clear my record and get my kid and have a life. I really believed that. And every time I would try, uh, terrible things would happen to me. I was beaten with a baseball bat when I tried to work as a juggler. So, I mean, this guy was paid not only to murder me, but to torture me and murder me. And so, I mean, my life was really hell on earth. And I was homeless in Tucson, Arizona, and I was on a park bench, and a bunch of cars pulled up with bright lights, and they started to egg me. Do you know what that means? They were throwing eggs at me. Yes, I do know. They also started throwing hard-boiled eggs at me and then rocks at me. Wow. Now, um, you and I are both jugglers. Do you know what it means to pass clubs with more than one person, to do a feed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to Uh, stand in a circle and do that. Right. Okay, can you imagine a person standing and doing a right and a left-hand feed to two other people? yeah. I can do that. I can juggle. I can shower clubs out of either hand to two other people. Wow. Now, that's, as you know, a rare skill. I, I worked really hard to get there. Okay, you know that as a juggler. Yeah. That's something I did. I worked hard. Well, I'm being stoned now. I'm being stoned. And I've tried to white light these people. I've tried to tell these people, hey, stop it. I've never hurt anybody. I've never done anything wrong. Quit throwing rocks at me. Well, I started to slip on my own blood. Okay, I'm going down into the grass. I'm starting to slip. And in the headlights, there's a woman and a man, and they have like an eight-year-old, maybe a nine-year-old little boy. And he's a little blonde boy, and they have him in the lights, and they are holding him by his hair, Lonnie. And they point to me, and they go, see what happens if you speak out? This is what we're going to do to you. Oh, my God. See what? Okay, now I'm going down. I'm slipping in my own blood. I've got multiple lacerations all over my body. I've got bruises everywhere. I'm going down. And I got so angry, Lonnie. I got enraged. You know those old pictures of Shiva with the multi arms? (laughs) All of a sudden, I was picking up rocks and throwing them back with either hand. And I was breaking out their headlights. I was, I was hitting the people that had hit me with the rocks. I hit the woman holding the kid's head. I hit the man. I got close enough to the kid, and I looked him right in the eye. And he was crying, looking at me. And I looked at him, and I said, we can't help who we're related to. Call 911. Wow. You are all right. This is not your fault. Call 911. Tell people what's happening. And back to throwing the rocks. And I mean, these guys had really hurt me. These were big guys, too, throwing the rocks. And they started getting hit. And they were going, hey, stop it. Hey, don't do that. <laughs> well, what did you think I was going to do? Just sit there and did die they back for you? Down? Did they back down? 
everybody backed down. I started breaking their headlights. They started taking off in droves. They didn't want their cars what, hurt. What year, what year was this? Um, this was when I was still homeless, so it was probably 2001. I would suggest and, people um, not to repeat that in defense because these days they'll just kill you. What? These days they would have killed you if you would have started throwing you rocks know, back. They would have used deadly force. They're under orders. This is this is how they're getting away with it. That, or legally, this is what they're saying is that oh well, we were defending ourselves while they're torturing people. And uh, I know it's but up. but I'm just saying. For that day and age, for that time, it was the only way I would have survived I'm that night. I'm glad that you did. Thank you for standing up to the police. But the big <laughs> but we have ten minutes left. Let me oh, let me reiterate, children, people, we cannot use violence against these monsters. We cannot fight back. All my fingers were later broken, yeah. and they were broken because I was too passive. Okay, I was passive because the people breaking my fingers were were booking me. I was accused of no crime. My only crime was vagrancy. My only crime was I was poor. Let me make it clear to you, we cannot fight them with violence. We are a gentle, angry people. We are fighting right now for life on this planet. Children don't shoot each other, don't shoot each other in schools. Nobody fight back physically because we are outgunned. We well, must fight back that, with the truth. The real truth, this is what I believe, Love really is greater than fear. We have to. That's right. We really have. Like, this is the thing that I saw very compelling out at Standing Rock. When the police were backing down there, like, the men were walking away. And they're like, you know what? We forgive you. And I was like, that kind of a statement. One of the cops turned around like, what are you, stupid idiot? You could hear him, like, looking at him like that. But the fact is that they're willing to forgive these perpetrators is a stronger power over their violence. And that's the thing. Well, now, I don't forgive. I don't. I, 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 I can't. I'm not God. I don't God. think you have to forget, but you have, it's important to you. Must, in order to release the uh, kept, otherwise you're going to stay on the track. That's what I think. You, forgiveness is about, well, like, really just, like, letting it go and not, I mean, I'm not saying put yourself in harm's way again. And I'm not saying not protect yourself and not be aware of who the enemy is. I'm not saying that we're not going to have enemies, you know, that the people like I don't for me, like Dick Cheney is our enemy of of the state. Like he's one of the and Henry Kissinger's. I think those people aren't even practical. I think they have crimes against humanity against them. And I think the people running Fukushima, the people violating God. my privacy, me with renewable energy. This is a crime against humanity. This is a crime against life on my sacred planet. And it's not about forgiveness. Leave that to God. Dharma. But it's about being nonviolent and doing conscious, correct dharma, conscious, correct action. And and one of the things, uh, I know we don't have much time left, but there, you know, I, I don't believe that we can fight this terrible uh, technical poison with with simply organic ways. We're going to really need to sarcophagize Fukushima. We're going to have to stand up to the surveillance state. But in the meantime, it's good to do a prayer for your water. It is good to do a prayer before you eat your food. And one of the ways that I survive, and I know that this works, my juggling is a form of yoga, that I consciously am projecting the spirit, the white light into my body for help. And I do it for others too. I went in to children with cancer who were dying and bed juggling shows. And people said, were you doing magic? Were you doing magic? The kid feels better. And some of those children actually have went into remission. I'm not saying it works every time. It is not me. It is the great spirit. It's the yeah. Christ light in all of us. It's, the universe. it's, it's not about. The universe. Yeah. It's about all the peoples. When I do astrology, I am connecting into a conscious universal thing that affects everybody. And that doesn't mean they can share me. They can't share me because I'm talking to Lonnie Clark. They can't share me because I'm a good person. You can go share a $2 whore out in the alley, folks, but you cannot share me. You pay me my royalties for every second you violated my life. You pay me because that's how we hit them, Lonnie. That's how we change them. We hit them in the pocketbook. That's how we get to them. That's what they understand. You pay me my royalties or you're not going to survive stealing my royalties. And we do it with Dharma, with correct action. 
And every time the cup is full, you drink your full. This is the old pagan mantra. But what ye do to harm others comes back on you three times, three times, three to the third power. I am talking Dharma here. I'm talking karma. We cannot exist as a country of hypocrites. And the good Lord, the great spirit who gave us this wonderful time in history, this beautiful time with our families on Thanksgiving, we must now fight. We, we're going to fight for their lives. We're going to fight for their help. We're going to fight for their well-being. And, and for me, even the consciousness to up. think. You do not mean violence. Right, peacefully. Violence. No violence. No violence. Standing up we are going to fight with truth. Ways. We have to find clever ways, civic action, uh, pa- you know, calm resistance. That's the issue is we have to just not take their – you just have to not hear their no. You just have to, like, say, you know what? We are going to have a peaceful planet. We're not going to accept your well, negative life. calling no. into this guy's office, calling in about me being harassed. That saved my life in Tucson. It saved my life here in this town, saying to the officials, are you allowing her to be bugged? Are you allowing people to follow her with, mic- with microphones? Pe- are you allowing this? It's so in? illegal. Tell people what, tell- I'm in a town. The entire area, the entire area is probably 35,000 people. It's a small town. And I have told my landlords, I have told the people that own the property, I've told the, the everybody, uh, Section 8, I'm on Section 8, I've told everybody, the government, you cannot use me, you have no right to violate my life. I've told this to everybody, and I mean it, I'm serious. You want and to when tell people, the people see the me bullied, you're living in so they can call the sheriff's office and tell them to... Everybody in Wenatchee say absolutely no. When you see me being assaulted, and it's an assault, to use repetitive phrases on anybody. It's torture. Any bit where in the world. And when you see that, you stand up, you say no. You call the DA, you call the sheriff's office, you say no. We're not going to allow her. She's a juggler. So what? She's not hurting anybody. She's our juggler. She likes us. We like her. You leave her alone. Because they do like me, Lonnie. Because I've lived here long enough for them to know I'm very virtuous. I really walk the talk. I don't do drugs. I'm I'm not out partying. They know I'm a hard worker. They know that I'm a disabled little old lady. They know it. And we can stop them. We don't have to put up with this stuff. This well, stuff isn't well, part of our constitution. I want to ask you about two things. First, I want to yeah. say this thing about conscious. You said, you know, the actor... Thomas Ackerman has, separates making a conscious act and acting out of your conscience, right? So that I want right. to have a different conversation about that. I had hoped to jump in, but I didn't want to interrupt you. But let's have a – that's going to take a little bit more of an explanation, and I'm hoping I can have Tom back on to discuss the difference of, yes, we're going to make a conscious act, a conscious act to do things, you know, to act our dharma, but there's a difference. People need to act on their conscience, and that is doing the right That's thing. That's right. Those That's two right. Are sort of doing the correct thing every day of your life. You get up, and I every day I, I raise my hands and I let the good energy flow into my body. And I think about all the radiation flowing away from me. You can do this for your children, mm-hmm. you can do this for your friends. You just protect and I want you to it. think about that. I don't know. I don't know, but I know one thing. See, I can't claim that I can cure anybody from cancer, but I know that prayer doesn't hurt, and we might as well pray all we can. You know what? Prayer is just constant thought into that power of the universe to protect us. Like, I really believe that we can call in whatever that energy is to build the whatever's going on out there, it's going to happen. But we'll, I mean, things Mm -hmm. are going to happen in our family, but. We're going to be okay, and we have to just call on to that higher, I don't know, vibration, I guess is what I call it. And you know why I think we have this power? Mm-hmm. And I'm glad we've sort of wound into this. We only have about four minutes left. I heard this And I wanted day, to leave with people right. thinking this stuff. Well, listen, I want to ask ahead. you this. That the earth is the heart of the universe. The earth is important to the universe. We can't just like, oh, well, it's just another planet. We're just a speck on the earth. Uh, we have a unique energy on this planet that's been created. And the mammals and the planet and earth is part of that. We're part of the earth and we're part of that energy. And this is why we have human civilizations keep coming back because the love of the earth and the universe wants us to thrive and live in joy. That's part of a gift that we have to give the universe. 
Have you heard of well, that? Well, Monty, concept? that's exactly right. Think about how big the universe is. It's enormous. Yet nowhere else in the universe is little Gaia. She sits alone all by herself, a jewel in the space around Sol. And there is no other planet in the entire universe like Gaia. We are unique. Every planet is unique. I believe planets grow up, and what they want to be more than anything else is to have a sentient life be evolved on their planet. I think they're into this. I think it's all going on all the time. And there is a hierarchy from the great spirit down, from what we call Yewa, or, and I believe Muslim, Jew, uh, Zorkastrian, all of them are correct. There is no wrong way. That's but the there basis is only the one way. That's the basis of right. the Right. Believing that we will not violate another being. Believing that we have no right to do violation to do others. We are violating this world right now with Fukushima uh-huh. for billion years into the future. That means all the oldest rocks will have to go down and be uh, go into the planet core and come up again before we can get rid of this stuff. So we have to deal with this right now in our time, in our space, right now. I'm going to have Dana it's because a few corporations are trying to control everything. Dana Durnford's going to be my guest host tomorrow. So I'm really looking forward to him talking. I'm sure I've been watching. Yes. And honestly, this is what it takes. This is what it does take as citizen journalists. So, Hope, we have 45 seconds left. So I want to thank you for being with us. I really, you know, I'm. I'm going to be on the air now five days a week. I've picked up Kevin Blanche's slot. I There's so many people to talk to. I want to give venue to people on a much more regular basis. So I hope you'll come back soon because there we really I do, do too. need to understand. And we can't just have snippets of information. And I find it unfortunate that the... Uh, elite in the in the truth nuke truthers the, those people can't find the time because we do cuss we do the, you know like you said cussing is a big thing but i'm hoping to change that dynamic and have some really good power hitting you know quote elite to understand this to come and talk with us to give this to push us forward and bring the citizen activists and the standards together so we can stop these people that's exactly right